Hi, I'm Justina and I'm a health and wellness counselor. In this video, I'll give you a brief look into our eating behavior. Standard psychotherapy approaches assume that eating disorders are often a compensation mechanism or results of stress, childhood issues and so forth. Today, I'm going to share with you a different approach that might help you for good. Did you know what the number one problem of human history was not long ago? Starvation. Your nervous system evolved to seek the most calorie-dense foods in the environment. Eating food is a famine defense mechanism. Gaining weight easily is a famine defense mechanism. Having less sensitive nutrient and stretch receptors in your stomach that signal you when you reach satiety is a famine defense mechanism. After a period of restriction, the chances are high that you end up binging, which is, you guessed it, a famine defense mechanism. All these things feel uncomfortable for us, but in the end, they save us from dying. These instincts feel very confusing and disrupting in the modern world, but you cannot change millions of years where we were designed within just a couple of hundred years. In the modern world, most foods we consume are highly processed and palatable foods that are hijacking our nervous system. Your nervous system detects those foods with all your senses like taste, view and smell. Even if you rationally don't want to eat them, your instincts are aware of those foods around you. Their job is to keep you alive and not to make you happy in the long run. Almost nobody knows this, at least not yet. Our modern food is a pleasure trap in many ways. You will hear me talk about this concept a lot. Therefore, I recommend watching my video about it I linked in the show notes. If you are stuck in the I do this for compensation or because of stress or other issues, then why are you still suffering from it? Maybe you should try a new approach. Sometimes we hold on to things and mindsets because they are excuses for our behavior. Of course, your mind does not want to give up those highly processed foods because your mind evolved in an environment where scarcity was the biggest problem humans faced. Our part of the brain, which is necessary for survival, always wants rich foods that are addictive because it assumes that they are more beneficial for survival. In the short term, they are, but these foods can ruin people's life in the long run. We need wisdom in terms of healthy eating. In this matter, wisdom is when renunciation becomes profit. This means getting rid of highly processed food and replacing it with healthy unprocessed food instead. It's one of the hardest things in life, the pleasure trap. Of course, almost nobody wants to attempt this way because it is, it is you against your instincts. But we humans create artificial foods. Neither nature or God creates pizzas and candies. I love the modern time, but in terms of food, it is a disaster because it is destroying people's physical and mental health. Anorexia is also an adaptation to flee famine. Some individuals have inherited the genetic ability to respond to low body weight with specific adaptations that initially evolved to facilitate food depleted areas. Anorexia is turned on by weight loss and turned off by weight gain. It's the hormone leptin that does it. Leptin is sometimes called the satiety hormone. It helps inhibit hunger. 90% of anorexics are females. The reason for that is because ovarian hormones of the puberty turn on the heritability of anorexia. This presence of estrogen intensifies the fall in leptin. These people overestimate their fat resources and move actively and can't stop eating. With high energy and being optimistic about their own health, they were better at ignoring hunger and fatigue. They could be sent out to look for new territory. Wow, these people were heroes. The act of restriction in a small percentage of people with this particular gene, especially in women, is an instinct in order to migrate to new food-rich areas. People without this gene have different hormonal changes than anorexics have when they are starving. For example, they are not motivated to move. Any form of weight loss, even unintentional like after an illness or weight loss in professional athletes due to enormous amounts of training can turn on this gene in those individuals. Once the tribe was in the new food rich area, they ate again. 
a refusal of the food would have been impolite and you might have been expelled from the group. An ejection would have meant a great possibility of death when you were responsible on your own in the wild nature. There was no welfare state in ancient history that gave you food and a place to sleep like nowadays. For this reason, the anorexic person was essentially motivated by the village people to eat again and weight gain for them meant that the gene for anorexia was turned off again. We don't know how many of our ancestors ultimately died due to this condition, but enough of them survived and it turns out that this gene was advantageous for survival or at least for the survival of the group members. Therefore, this gene is passed on from generation to generation to this day. As you can see, we are social creatures to the core. We are interdependent. This video is not about anorexia, but I wanted to address this topic briefly so that you understand the principle of the adaptation to flee famine. If you want to know more about anorexia, I highly recommend the work of the psychologist Shan Geisinger. I linked her website in the show notes. Most psychotherapists are not trained in how a healthy diet should look like about the pleasure trap and the adaptive to flee famine hypothesis. Most eating disorder treatments are not keeping up with science, unfortunately. People with obesity, binge eating, anorexia and bulimia don't have a disorder. They are just in a current state of a famine defense. Their nervous system tries to help them to survive. You know what? Those people are heroes. Because if this adaptation to flee a famine wouldn't be so strongly distinct in our genes, our descendants wouldn't be here. It was a genetic advantage. Such people made it. No one would live today without those strong instincts in us to flee famine. Of course, some are more predispositioned to store fat more easily or are more susceptible to calorie-dense foods than others. Guys, but this isn't a disorder, it's a survival instinct. If we restrict our calories, we put ourselves in a famine. That's as if you push a button in your nervous system that turns on this defense mechanism. When rich food is around, we binge. When we are embarrassed because of weight gain, we create a famine by ourselves by eating less food because we assume this is the only way to lose weight. On top of that, people binge on rich food as a famine defense mechanism. They develop excess weight, which is the famine defense as well. Now things get out of balance because due to the rich food supply. Most people do not see this as a famine defense. Let's talk about movements like healthy at any size or intuitive eating. Healthy at any size is not true. It's only a political statement and intuitive eating is a scientific failure. You cannot eat intuitively from addictive, highly processed modern foods. Do you know why most women are obsessed with their body weight? A woman's body weight is an important indicator of her mate value. It sounds mean and it is, but it's not my concept. I talk more about this topic in a separate video I link in the show notes. It explains why we have such a high desire to be slim. If you ask yourself, but how do we then lose excess weight without some form of restriction? Remember that our modern foods lead to weight gain, therefore we have to handle the root cause. The truth is found in an unprocessed whole foods diet like the McDougal program for example or Chef AJ's program. Our weight is heritable by 70%. It's highly predictable by genetics but it's not determined by them. When you eat the right foods, which means unprocessed foods like potatoes, beans, rice, fruits and vegetables, in principle all the foods you can find in nature, you will reach a healthy BMI range without the need to restrict or count your calorie intake. Your body is well designed to eat those natural foods until satiety, but it's not designed to eat artificial foods like oil and sugar. You will never find a pizza tree or a candy bush in nature, right? Do you understand now why it does more harm than good to recommend a person with weight issues or restrictive tendencies to eat highly processed foods again? These foods are the origin of most weight and eating behavior issues. It's a disaster. This new information might be very overwhelming and, and a completely new view on this topic. 
Now you know why eating disorders, strongly speaking, aren't disorders rather than adaptations to flee famine. I suffered from binges for almost 15 years myself and know every nasty aspect of it. I do not know about this topic only in theory. I lived through it. I experienced firsthand what works and what does not. I have a whole video on my binge eating story I linked in the show notes. If we acknowledge this adaptation of the famine defense mechanism, it will help people take charge of their situation. Dr. Jen Hawk has a beautiful quote and it describes the situation pretty well. It's not your fault, but your responsibility. Every one of us deals with the pleasure trap to some degree. Only you can take action. It's your turn to bring your eating behavior back to balance and your famine defense mechanism. I'm happy to help you with this. And don't forget, eating is about avoiding famine.